Welcome back to my channel, Millionaire Gods of Earth. I'm your host, Ramudi Sir the High King. Royal family, if you're new, consider smashing the subscribe, the thumbs up, let the algorithm know what's up, let other like-minded souls know that we're out here with the share. If you enjoy the vibe of the channel, family, I appreciate all of those who have joined my channel as of late, and all of those who will join still. Today, we will be having a look at some Brick Summit activity. Yebo. Some Brick Summit activities, whereby, as you know, Bricks has been making Western Western nations nervous as of late. But at the same time, apparently, uh, the EU celebrates sanctions on Niger, causing food, medicine, and suffering of the people. Naturally, we know what it is. It's a struggle. It's a war. It's a not even really a war, but the final levels of neocolonialism. Any elements that maintain the illusion that they're still in power, they will celebrate. But I suppose we can have a quick start look at what is, during, uh, the summit. what is happening over there. I think it's at the but airport. But also we know that uh, the, the technocrats have concluded the documents of the summit. In relation to the extension, now they will present that document Boys. to foreign affairs ministers tomorrow. Red and carpet. the foreign affairs ministers uh, tomorrow will then look at the document. By the way, family, you are free to have your politics about, you know, what you feel about Russia, China, India, Brazil, all these countries. But outside of that, it must also be known that Anything that is a challenge to the Western hegemony, the G7, the NATO, everything is better than nada. It's better than being on your own thinking that you can survive those locusts. And, and finally present the document to heads of state and government and the five leaders will take a decision in terms of uh, the expansion. Yesterday, President Ramaphosa indicated that uh, he is in support of the expansion. Of course, it's no surprise because South Africa benefited from the expansion because mm -hmm. initially this group was called BRIC. Yeah, I, I'm keen to also just to look at the, the visuals, uh, you know, to talk about the pomp and ceremony because when you have so many leaders converging on the country, one can imagine just the military might that is necessary here uh, from South Africa's uh, uh, side as well, Sophie, just how much work we need to be uh, putting in as well. And a, a curious question as well as one would expect perhaps that when you see um, international dignitaries like these arriving at Vatikloff, this time actually arriving at Owar Tambo, do we know why this is? Well, you know that when you have these large summits, uh, you have uh, a situation where O.R. Tambo is also available to receive some of these plates. Others will, of course, land at Waterkloof. I know that uh, uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, will land at uh, Waterkloof tomorrow. And I know that uh, the president of China... Mm. And y'all know they've been doing everything in their power to interrupt and interfere and even stop it outright. Stop this summit from happening. Attacking us, our image, our everything. In the news, in the policy changes of the international uh, relations towards South Africa. Accusing us of crimes as we didn't commit. It, it was a nightmare. Xi Jinping later today. He no evidence to land here at, of the things we were uh, accused of still. And just to tarnish our image. Strange. It does happen, particularly when you have a, a, a big summit and interest and delegates and people arriving in their country. Yeah. And of course, those countries then uh, do make requests to say we want a private uh, facility or we want uh, the military base. And right. therefore, China and Brazil chose. A private facility that is OR. But I think for me, it's good for the okay. country, particularly when you look at the issues that are related to tourism, to showcase the aviation system of South Africa 
in terms of the private facilities that you have and remind people post-COVID-19 that uh, you have OR Tampo International, a busy hub and with good facilities. Yeah, I mean, the program really... Hey. Is the week, Sophie, cool. Cultural, I, mean, I was getting Chuck nervous for a minute, the family. To be quite honest with you, we know that uh, is, uh, President Lula da Silva, of course, not arriving good, alone, friends. he's bringing a, delega a delegation of his own. Um, he will be alongside the First Lady of Brazil. We know that... I thought it was just going to be pure military. I'm glad we had some culture. Yeah. Show the vibrancy of the ancients, the ancient people. Look at us, military on one side, culture on the other. Yeah. He's brought various ministers with him as well. In fact, uh, hearing over the weekend Delicates that he and diplomats is arriving with a new ministry tribes, in Brazil as well, called the Ministry of of um, of Racial Inequality. So some interesting conversations. Then, if you look up, if you look at the role that um, these ministers then are going to be playing over the next week, right? I imagine they'll be meeting with their South African counterparts, their Chinese counterparts. Um, so quite a few themes then that will be covered over the week. Well, you are correct. You'll have the summit for the five leaders. You will then have a summit the five. for the five leaders, the high uh, five. including African heads of the state first and five. government who are coming. You will also have a broader forum where you will have leaders from the south south and those that have been invited who are not necessarily from the continent and also not from the BRICS family and therefore you will have those different interactions but on the margins of this summit you will then have leaders uh, deciding in terms of who they want to meet particularly in relation to bilaterals because you have lots and lots of leaders from different countries so you can take forward some of the issues that you have uh, uh, to discuss and therefore I think uh, it will be uh, a moment uh, for uh, we are moving we, we we have a problem we have to constantly move so I'm saying uh, the issue of culture uh, I'm not surprised that uh, Brazil is also looking at that. And we know that uh, the other issue is that he is going to visit other countries. I know Angola because of the relationship. And therefore, I think for President Lula, this is an African uh, mm. uh, trip. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be now, seeing as part of the program, Sophie. Because um, any time, and I think what we can agree on is certainly 2023 has been a busy year for the president and the Department of International Relations. But we've seen so many bilateral meetings taking place with various leaders from various countries, and then there's Brazil. the public ceremony. You know, the 21 gun salute. How does that look when you have multiple leaders at, yeah. arrive? For my Afro-Brazilians, I want to see some Afro-Brazilians. Huh? I need to see some Afro-Brazilians out there. Living in the country, what does that program look like? Um, when do we see that pomp and ceremony of uh, uh, the military? Some Afro-Latinas. Well, we know that uh, the president Afro has got uh, a heavy program. Afros, period, point blank. I need to see some Afros on this delegation international yesterday he pointed out that he wants to strengthen the relations and you know that he will be going to the g20 summit next month he is going to go to the united nations general assembly on the margins of the united nations general assembly you will have that climate summit and you know that the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, will be in the country. And I think uh, the President will continue in strengthening the relationship between South Africa and the world. But as he pointed out yesterday, the focus will be on Africa, particularly starting with the SADC region. And then it will be South-South and of course other regions but uh, the south south and africa 
priority for President uh, Ramaphosa. You can see the President of Brazil the global has sack. arrived, he has landed, and he is now stepping out of the plane accompanied by the uh, First Lady. This is not the first time President Lula is visiting South Africa. He's no stranger to South Africa, as I pointed out that uh, All right. uh, his relationship with South Africa dates back when he was the president and he left office and he is back. And now he is meeting All our right. international relations minister, Dr. Naledi Pando, who is hey. here to receive him. But I'm I think also, when you remember Kwasatu at some point in time, they uh, were very keen to adopt what was called the Lula program uh, in terms of uh, uh, using uh, the socialist policies. Man, for a government ne uh, news network, there are glitchy. Uh, uh, organization, and therefore you can see here he is. Uh, he has arrived, uh, President Lula. President come on, Lula. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There he's greeting the officials. There he is greeting the officials. Mr. President, uh, I'll try, I'll try. Mr. President, back in the country, he's just watching those uh, activities. As the white you can man, see. I think. He looks like a very, uh, very President Lula Spanish of man. Brazil. And uh, Minister Naledi Pando here to receive him and uh, South Africa showcasing the culture and uh, the president uh, watching the lady by South African cultural performers um, just hours before we see uh, the kicking off of the 15th BRICS summit taking place tomorrow and he's right. flanked by uh, his first lady Rosangela Lula da Silva um, there with him um, and um, and, and, and this is going to be quite a big moment, not just for uh, global geopolitics, but certainly for the five countries that are involved at a time like this. And perhaps, Sophie, let's talk a little bit about President Lula da Silva himself, right, if we can. I don't know if you're able to hear me. But to talk about uh, just what he's represented for Brazil as well, I know that this would be his second tenure as uh, leader of Brazil, Sophie. So let's talk a little bit about just the impact Ancient that people. Lula da Silva has had, particularly on the BRICS block and, and also on the country. Ancient vibes. Mm. The Queen Mama on her on her red carpet. Look at her. The Queen Mother. All right. Well, uh, it seems... Uh, our foreign news editor, uh, Sophie Mukwena, they're unable to hear me. But as I was saying, of course, um, Lula da Silva now, president of the country, one of the uh, founding members of the BRIC bloc initially, uh, as it was called before South Africa joined in, adding that S at the end. Uh, but this is, of course, the I'm second here, time that we're I seeing... I can't hear now, ladies. We, this is, of course, the second time that we're seeing uh, Lula da Silva uh, leading Brazil, where he did also lead the country between 2003 and 2010. But uh, uh, a very important moment as he makes his way um, to into the program that he will be taking up. Of course, he's flanked by various ministers as well. Um, a lot of them then going to be interacting with their counterparts I want to hear the Queen here Mother in speak. South Africa. Obviously, bilateral and trade relations going to be a very important discussion there. Of course, Sophie Mukwena also talking about how this is for President Lula da Silva, not just a visit to South Africa, but an African visit as well, because uh, you would remember that this is the time when Africa as a continent has started uh, to really dig its heels in where the mm -hmm. Africa continental free trade area is concerned. And so mm -hmm. big discussions around what trade looks like um, as Africa wants to trade more easily uh, with itself. How does that look like with other uh, international bodies um, and countries? It looks like it looks like emancipation. When we Africans start trading among ourselves, our resources, we no longer have to leave. We can export to, uh, um, to other African countries and import from other African countries, processing, resources, everything. We share skill sets, we share knowledge, we share industry. 
top to bottom. If I have to move to a part of Africa where I want to do a mining operation and people from there want to come to South Africa to do something else, let that be an easy trade. Was it on... I think it was on our comment section. I don't know where, if it was on YouTube or TikTok, but someone said this is why um, the African Free Trade Agreement should also evolve to some type of v- um, free visa system for all African peoples on the continent and in the diaspora. Descendants of enslaved peoples, all of y'alls. Free visas, free travel, free transit. No restrictions because you are Afro. And their bilateral agreements. Um, of course, uh, we are expecting that many African countries, um, many African countries are going to be uh, in attendance as well. Um, so not just the five that are members of the bloc. A lot of them wanting to seek uh, uh, membership of uh, membership of the uh, BRICS bloc, and um, uh, that is obviously going to be a really big discussion. I imagine that as we see the international relations minister Naledi Pan door there uh, that she's going to be having a very busy day receiving all of these leaders that are coming in sophie let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing there now be quick well of course you can see the minister of international relations uh, is here at the airport he has just received the president of brazil minister now the work starts well we've been working for many months This week is the culmination and of course will be the toughest part of the preparations uh, that we've been part of. We're very glad to see the arrivals and we'll be busy for the next two days receiving leaders who will be attending various parts of the summit. Brazil quite a strategic country in relation to South Africa's foreign policy where we are participating as non-aligned movement, but also South-South, and also at the UN, at the G20. Well, a very important country, both in terms of being a regional power, but also a country that has rapidly modernized and grown its economy and diversified its economy. So there are lessons for South Africa to learn from Brazil both in terms of the response to socio-economic challenges, but also ensuring broader growth in the country. Thank you, Minister. Thank you for your time. Now, Lady Day, you have it, the Minister of International Relations. She inspires me. Always good to hear from the Minister. But let us continue, family, in other news. While the BRICS summit is happening, the threat to the Western hegemony on all fronts. Other signs of Africa's emancipation is obviously the events going on over there in West Africa. With Niger rebelling against France, followed swiftly and backed up by other countries like um, Mali and Burkina Faso. And rumor is the West is afraid that even other countries like Chad must start getting ideas. So everyone is in a ruckus. EU celebrates sanctions on Niger causing food, medicine and suffering of the people. Wangel Zalalem, sister. They're doing this to send a message to not just Nigerians, but other African countries. Mm. They want to warn us that if you say no to exploitation, this is what's going to happen to you. This Seems is everyone's got this brand of a microphone. I Our like it. Misery, Africans' misery, pleases them. It does. I mean, they spent centuries getting in on that flavor, you know? European Special Representative for the African Sahel region, Emanuela Del Rey, said, quote, Sanctions are starting to take effect. There is not enough medication, not enough food. Power outages are even more frequent than before. If we want the Nigerian military junta to weaken, we must continue with the sanctions she said that bro is very pleased with what the sanction is doing she mm. said the shortage of medicine food and the power outage is helping them she said the military junta will weaken in niger which is bs you know why because it's hurting the people not the military the military will get whatever they need to get in order to survive the leaders will do that because they'll feed themselves with whatever 
support they'll get from Burkina Faso, Mali, whatever it may be, they will survive because they're the leaders. You know who is going to hurt? The actual people, Nigerians. They're the ones that are gonna suffer without getting medicine, without getting food and electricity outage. Those are the people that are going to be affected. Oh man, family. I mean, there are easier ways to, I mean, the, the, the thing is, Africa's youth outnumbers Europeans. They are doing all these things acting like no one is paying attention to the fact that they're doing it to Niger and other uh, African countries intentionally. They act like the rest of us are just going to magically understand it and align with Europe. To me, everything they do is a further exacerbating their strain between African and Western nations. Period. Period. This is just one more nail in their coffins. These acts. Because they forget. They are represented everywhere. Protests through the roof at every embassy until they're crying to make it stop. Know it. The European Union knows it, and we know it, and Nigerians know it. But they act like it's just targeted towards hurting the military junta. Because mm. we all know it's the people, majority of the people, the most vulnerable are the ones that are going to get hurt more because of this sanction but they say they're pleased with the sanction but you know why they're doing this they're doing this to send a message to mm -hmm. not just nigerians but other african countries they want to warn us that if you say no to exploitation this is what's going to happen to you we're going to take action we're going to make you regret we're going to starve your people that's exactly what we're seeing happen in Niger but they want to act like it's towards them no, no 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 don't get it wrong they want to send a message to Niger and other countries that might think that they no longer want to be exploited they're not for neocolonization we're done we want to be able to benefit from our own resources live our lives mm -hmm. and die we're tired we are done mm -hmm. suffering on this earth when we are blessed God loves us so much. He's given us all these resources. And he said, be fruitful, multiply, eat what you want, get what you need from underground. Instructions were simple. But unfortunately, we're blessed. We do that, and we ah. do that, somebody else is going to lose. On the Devils. Of life and Fiends. And it's clear as day. But that's not the reality right now though we're working towards it and they are seeing it happen firsthand so they need to do something now it's niger tomorrow it's going to be another country and in the past it was another country we just have to understand if we don't stand up for niger you know what i think tomorrow, nobody's going to stand up for us so let's do this together if yes we family together, fam, we can go so far like i truly believe that so as i said he was pleased with the sanction let's wicked wicked that grin that post-colonial neo-colonial master the grin oh we are not our ancestors the grin the grin we're coming to take everything that you are blessed with africans because we are devils we don't have anything in europe why ask nicely if we can send mercenaries if we can make policies that make your country hard to live in To them that Niger shall prevail. Let's lend our voice, let's talk about it, let's educate ourselves and our family members and our friends and our neighbors what's really going on in Niger, even though it might seem like it's far away, it's not here, it doesn't concern me. It should really concern us, and we should really feel like it's our battle for Niger to get what they deserve. But I'm glad that they're showing their true colors. That's this right, sister. Shining bright, and we're let us see in 4k and i love it because it's gonna wake up so many more people that's I'm right glad at least we get to see them and fam let's continue to pray for niger because they really need it right now they're going through it with everything that is going on even though some people are rejoicing with what is happening in niger mm -hmm. we are not happy about it and we want a better situation for them 
but anyways fam let me know down below what your thoughts are about eu's excitement and also what's really thank you sister what do you think is gonna happen in the next few weeks and months i am on gilzal alam i'll see you on the next one stay blessed bye i will tell you right now family this this is the moment where africa truly takes a, st a strong decision decisive action decisive policy making because keep in mind we have everything that they need to survive because we don't want to give it to them we want to emancipate ourselves they will rather just i mean They've been at this since every famine, since every famine, since every famine, since the 80s, since every news network cycle you've ever seen about famines in Africa, chaos in Africa. Oh, let's donate to Africa, so on and so forth. We're going to be the ones donating to you guys in the coming decades. Bet money. This is nothing less. New colonial warfare family. And we are struggling. It's a struggle. We are in it. And we should keep on keeping on, family. Our people deserve nothing less on the continent and in the diaspora. We have suffered too much. Our ancestors have been through, uh, through too much. And our uh, descendants are promised the future. Be fruitful and multiply. Go into the ground. Take what you need. Live. Live and let live. Anyone who has researched the history of those phrases will know that we were told everything we needed to do. Continue to pray for Niger because... To be at peace and stay divine. But like the sister said, witness, witness, the enemy shows their true face. Let me know what you think in the comments below, family. If you enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up. If you enjoy the vibe of the channel, smash the subscribe. And I'll appreciate you. Stay royal, family. Stay dangerous. Stay blessed. Peace.